What's up with it, Hood News peeps? This is episode 22. Number 22. Yes, man. Check it out. You know that recent looting we were talking about back yes. on Homestead Road? Yes. All the beauty shops getting hit up and everybody, mm -hmm. how everybody's going to have great hair. <laughs> Look at little Duchess. <laughs> she got the retro hair and she don't care. Man. Yeah, she's got that little bob going. I see you, Duchy. Hey, friends, adopt, don't shop. That is the message. We love our dogs, the little hood pups. Mm -hmm. We got more on the way. Go get your snacks, your drinks. Uh, it's going down. Great show, number 22. All right, as you've been following, HISD lately has been having a lot of controversy around this new superintendent or the guy that's in charge of HISD. Grizzy, you were out this past Saturday at some protests at City Hall. A lot of people showed up. What's going on? Okay, so HISD students... The, the parents out there, the community, they're gathering collectively to to protest because we've had over the last couple of months, and it's been going on for quite some time now, actually, where principals who've been working at the schools for a long time, they've been getting fired. Teachers, custodian, staff, janitors, mm -hmm. all kinds of people are getting fired. So it's like a lot of great people are right. losing their jobs. The students and the parents and, and faculty, they're uniting together. They're saying enough. They're not going to tolerate this. And they're making demands. They're literally saying no. They are standing up and rising up against this, this superintendent. Yeah, and this guy, Miles, he goes from different cities, I guess, because the state took over HISD, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And HISD for years have had the controversy, too, as well. So it's not like... They, yeah. they came, the state took over because the HISD wasn't performing right. Right. But in the process, they're getting rid of the great, uh, good teachers. And you can see a lot, almost like hundreds of people showed up. Even Blue Ribbon schools are mm -hmm. badly affected right now. It's created, uh, you know, the morale at the schools. The kids aren't, you know, like they were having a great time learning. Right. We, just because there were a few bad schools doesn't necessarily mean that all the schools were in a bad condition. We've got great blue ribbon schools out there and they're suffering and their principals and their teachers are being let go. These are schools that are not the issues. Then we have specialized schools mm -hmm. like uh, of the performing arts right. type. They're in danger of not being uh, like the performance type schools, like right. the musical and the arts. So public education here in Houston is suffering. under yeah, is suffering. So you were out there, you know, with the crowd too as well. Yes. And I heard you're doing chants too yeah, as well. Yeah. I like your chants. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> ho, ho. Mike Miles has got to go. They already got hey, I right, got it down got pack. It yes. <laughs> so you were out there. What's the feedback? What are the what, what are they saying? Well, they're just gonna keep fighting. I mean, this mm -hmm. guy left the Dallas public school system in shambles. And uh why is there this is another question, why is money from H I S D going to Colorado. Wow. Mm, I don't know. Mm. You know, more questions than answers. The stuff we got to look into. In yes. fact, uh, Jill on Facebook, she says, H-Town, this, is, this isn't this is just for parents. This affects your community over and over again. Absolutely. We talk about that all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it affects, even though, like, for instance, maybe your school, your dis your kids aren't district in HISD. Mm. You're in Houston area. It affects our community altogether as a whole. So we should all be involved in this yeah. or be aware of what's going on. And, and you know, it's amazing how many parents don't know whose kids attend the Houston Independent School District. They have no clue what's going on. Wow. They're clueless. Like, this place should have been packed. We were in front of City Hall mm -hmm. on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. I was expecting, like, droves and droves and droves of people, but, like, no. And then we also got video that Friday. The kids had enough. Everything from preparatory schools, the high schools, even middle schoolers. Wow. Were, the kids were sending in videos. I mean – stand up you know that's like a big movement too as yeah, well and yeah. also the, you know they're looking out out for the teachers too as well mm -hmm. the good teachers are out there and these these students are are afraid of losing losing them so you know props to these these students for keeping it peaceful yeah for right? sure keeping it peaceful mm -hmm. number one and doing it the right way too as well and not going out and disrespecting the you know you know the the community as well yeah. so uh props to these students i'm, for I'm all for concerns. it i think it's like a revolution and they're fighting for their education so mm -hmm. i mean if the kids are going to be doing anything like this it's going to be for the right cause and i'm so proud of these kids they could you know do whatever with their time they mm -hmm. could choose to ignore it they can choose to not do anything or play around when they're out right. there you know no, these kids are standing up for what they believe in, and that's their education. These kids are our future. Absolutely. 
All right, as you everybody knows that we like uh, taking care and really acknowledging people who are leaders in the community. Uh, recently, we partnered up with Air Team Heating and Cooling to acknowledge leaders in the Houston area. And Grizzlies Hood News is excited to announce Julie Garcia and Bernadette Rivas as this month's H-Town Hero of the Month. They are, they are with uh, Journey Together. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank and you thank you guys us. for your service to the community. Tell us about Journey Together and your vision and what you guys do. We, our vision is to help children or individuals with special needs. And the reason that we started this is because us ourselves are mothers of individuals with special needs. Um, her son, David Rivas, and my son, Eric Salinas. And so we ventured out to start this program, um, especially like in the Latino community, because a lot of the Hispanic community, um, they have that part where they don't like to let go of their children and they don't really trust everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, we're like, let's do something for the community and let them know that we're out there to help them and help their children grow and become successful because just because they have a disability does it not make them able to do something. Right, and this is a facility that you guys are open every day, right? Or every day of the week? Right now we're currently open three days a week mm -hmm. just because of our population, okay. but our goal is to be open every, every day. And of course week. with partnerships and sponsorships you guys uh, get the more obviously in the need that you got or more availability you guys are to the community. Um, tell me, typically your demographics, how, who are you guys trying to help? What is the demographics that you guys are, are, are trying to support? Well, we're mostly, of course, we deal with special needs, mm -hmm. IDD individuals. Um, we, I, I mean, everybody's welcome. There's a lot of IDD individuals that are sitting at home that are doing nothing mm. and they are fantabulous. And when I mean they're fantabulous right. is they have so many gifts to offer the community and to themselves, you know? Yeah. Now, if, if I'm a parent or if I'm a loved one and I wanna get somebody involved into this or a part of the program, how do I go about doing that? Well, they can reach out to us on our Facebook page. We do have our phone numbers there. Um, that's mainly one of our social media platforms. And we do have Instagram also. Um, our phone numbers are listed. People can reach out to us. We try to get the word out, um, just word of mouth. And they're more than welcome to stop by and visit mm -hmm. and see what we're all about. Well, God bless you guys. And thank you guys again for providing the service to the community. Um, you know, this is what we're about at Grizzlies Hood News is about taking care of one another, bringing awareness to not just the activities that's happening in our area, but also the good. The that's good the good part of it, that's because H, we're H-Town strong. And yeah. this is what you guys represent. You represent our community very well. Thank and that's you. why I'm very excited to announce you guys as, H, as Air Team Heating and Cooling's H-Town Hero of the Month. You guys uh, will get a $500 gift card on behalf of Air Team Heating and Cooling. Yeah. Thank you. And then also a certificate too as well. Uh, thank you guys, Julie and, and Bernadette. Thank you guys so much awesome. for everything you've done for the Houston community. Our prayers and our support are for you guys. And if you guys are watching, make sure you follow them on Facebook. Put your support behind this great organization that's helping those in the community. This is a, a, a very important sector of, of Houston, and uh, they need as much support as much as possible. Thank you, guys. I thank really appreciate so it so much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much. It's and a pleasure. This is a journey together. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Traffic stops this past week, Hector, have led to seizures of tons of money and drugs. So I saw like there was tons of weed packed up in the back of an SUV, but covered up with like, look like curtains. A uh, shower curtain, dude. Like, you know, like, I don't know. That's not a way to ride incognito, incognito. Yeah. That is no way to, man, like, you would think there'd be more thought process, like boxes of cereal, detergent. I don't know, like something dirty clothes so they don't, you know, look through your drawers. But <laughs> right. I mean, I don't know. Like, this was insane. Like, it was just out there, just a shower, a thin shower curtain from a family dollar i know because i've seen that shower curtain at family dollar so <laughs> oh my goodness there they go look at the dps troopers man it was just too crazy a routine traffic stop just a traffic stop dude violated a, a something on the road mm -hmm. maybe ran a red light and boom whoop, gotcha yeah knowing how sloppy it was probably had the cup a shower curtain hanging out the yeah, window too I'm as well i'm telling you man somebody's plug is down plug down you guys <laughs> this is like 
which is insane. Yeah, was it uh, was it this traffic stop that led to the 1.8 million? No, this was, is uh, a different one. This uh -huh. was over on the southeast part of Houston. This is off a of Park Place and 45. Then another traffic wow. stop led to some big scale stuff, man. This is the one with the Batman symbol. Yes, one, right? yes. So this was this past week they pulled over someone and they found about five hundred thousand dollars worth of money in the bed of the truck. <laughs> Wait, I'm like, what is going on? You can't make these stories. Right. Up. So further investigation led to like a house on Russell Street. Everybody's been talking about this house. They want to know which that. one it is. Yeah. And, and you know, they found more drugs, more stuff. I mean, they found a lot of uh, a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Look, they got Batman on there like, woo, the bat call, baby. You ain't going to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. And. Yeah, they got the yayo. They found all kinds of craziness, man. Look at all that money. That's what a what a one point two million dollars looks like. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it looked like the seizure of one point eight million. Oh, one point eight million in cash Ooh. and drugs too, as well. Yeah. Uh, deputies with Montgomery County. Montgomery County. Montgomery Shout County. out to yeah. uh, Kenneth Rowdy Hayden. That's one of our peeps, man. Like I was so impressed. I was like, man, you guys go, man. The routine traffic yeah. stop. Moco don't play. Yeah, Moco don't play. <laughs> mm -mm. So yeah, it's just insane. Substantial information that they got from that traffic stop led to the stash house yeah remember a couple weeks back we had the shrine oh yeah the shrine yeah, yeah, with yeah. hbd put that uh -huh. had the shrine. Uh -huh. with the ak and today we have the batman <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got the batman man just crazy man follow your nose that's how it goes mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <Fruit Loops>. yeah <laughs> toucan sam toucan sam man puro perico Man, just some craziness, man. So, yeah, be on the lookout. You never know what – like, that's the crazy thing. We're on the road, and you never know yeah. who's got what next to you. Man. But good thing this stuff is off the streets, too, oh, as well, because it's going to end up in the hands of kids, adults, too, that don't need it. And, Hector, you know, mm -hmm. let's just be real. Like, we don't even know if this is the the, the, the original stuff, like, from back in the day. Like, right. people could snort, and they knew what they were snorting. A lot of people are dying of overdoses, oh, fentanyl yeah. overdoses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this stuff off the street might actually save some lives. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of those stories of people mm. overdosing on fentanyl and all kinds of stuff, yeah. too, as well. So it's, yeah. it's you know, who knows what's in that stuff? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the good thing it's off the streets, yeah. out of people's hands, and uh, it could be lives that are saved. Mm -hmm. Go, officers, go. Houston, we have a problem. Mm. We have a huge problem, and we're tired of it, and it hurts, and this is so horrible. Dog enthusiasts out there will unite. We've got to call it out. And when we see it, dog dumping. Right. Animal dumping. Look at this lady. Whoever this is, who ha she's still not been identified, even with the license plate. This woman dumped a blue-nosed pit bull in the middle of a neighborhood and just left the poor dog who had, like, just had puppies, has skin conditions, uh, and just dumped the dog. And the poor dog was trying to keep up, you know? Mm. Fortunately, our hood news peep, Got the dog, saw what was happening. Look at the, look, it's got all kinds of mange. Like, it's just so sad. Right. We've got a license plate. We still have not identified this person. Um, yeah, it's just really unfortunate. Luckily, the hood news peep, Hector, was able to uh, get the dog, feed it, give it water. She did call Bark. And okay. so we're going to follow up with this because there is an adoption number, like a, like a case number for the dog. Right. And hopefully we can get it to a, a home. Yeah, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Grizzy. You know, isn't this against the law too? Yeah, mm -hmm. most definitely yes. It's, it's illegal. It's inhumane, and it's part of the reason why we have a mil like millions of dogs and cats all over H Town just strays. Yeah, I mean, a, a few weeks back we talked. About, you 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 showed a video of like a pack of twelve dogs mm -hmm. just roaming the streets of Northside. Yeah. Um, and you know this is part of the reason here, but. You know, if you took on the, the the pit or took took on the animal, you have a responsibility to oh, take care of it. Yeah. Or if you can't, pass it along to somebody or take the effort to give it to an, an adoption agency where they can properly handle the dog and manage the dog. And and this dog story is typical to so many other dogs. After like they're they're somebody gets the dog, it's cute, oh, it's so sweet. Oh, I want the dog. It, it's a kid's gift. Mm -hmm. Then they mate the dog, you know, to to breed it. Then the dog has pups and it no longer is worthy or worth anything to these kind of people mm -hmm. that do this. Uh, and, and they are replaced by the pups. So my question is, where are the puppies? Yeah. Man, are they going to go to good homes? Or are they going to go to people just like this? I mean, if people think that backyard breeding, they're like Frenchies is one thing. That's the trending dog. But I remember when the pit bull was a trending animal. Right. So everybody coveted. They wanted the dog. Well, unfortunately... Uh, it is no longer seen that way. This dog has a bad label on it, you know, so 
these dogs, when they get dumped, they're in danger. First thing that happens to them when they go to these uh, uh, dog places, they get put down because yeah. they're not really like. Too bad we're not doing it the other way where the dog's dumping her on the oh, side of the road. I know, <laughs> right? man. It's so sad. And dogs are like loyal to the end. Even if she were to come back and pick the dog up, the dog would probably still go with her, man. Mm, she was, the dog was, that she was really happy to get some food too oh, as well. Oh, yeah. She's a sweetheart. So, yeah, I hope we can get this dog adopted out because there is a deadline. The clock is ticking mm. every day. Tons of dogs are ethanized, put down, and we need to do better, Houston. Do better. Yeah, and thanks to the Hood News people for providing food and and also, you know, security for this dog and taking care of it, bringing it shelter during yeah. that time and doing the right thing. Right. Can we get a come on down? Because mm. it's not too late. We, we can still call her out. I'm here with Ashley Garza. She's franchise owner of Arandas 21. This is the Jersey Village location. Hey, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, ma'am. Taqueria Sarandas is a huge staple in H-Town. A lot of us grew up eating there. Can you tell us more about some of the new things that are happening right now for Arandas? Well, right now we're kind of, I guess you can say we're kind, we're not rebranding. We're still the same Arandas, right. but they we're getting like new uniforms. We're painting all the taquerias the same, trying to be uniformed, I guess you can say. Um, the new colors. Um, stand out a lot <laughs> right right i see that so if you're driving down the highway you're gonna see us yes you're Even gonna the see. plating is different yes we have as you guys see here we have new plates we have a new collaboration with la vaquita oh okay can you tell us more about that collab because they're also h-town as well so we have a new menu and it's with partner with la vaquita um we are using some of our plates that we already have like the cinco taquitos mm -hmm. um, but we're just switching it up using the queso fresco instead of like the charro beans so okay. everyone has like a different preference for how they want to eat their single taquitos. Some might need the charros, some might want queso fresco on them. Uh, we're using their crema vaquita, which is very good. It has a different taste than like the sour cream that you have and other dishes. Um, and yeah, it's just a new, some new different plates. We hear there are exciting new items on the menu. Can you tell us more about those items? Like, like I've, I'm seeing stuff I have never seen before. So the caldo tlapeño, it has chile chipotle, which you can choose to add mm -hmm. or not. It makes it very spicy. Okay. Avocado, queso fresco, um, veggies, chicken. It's very good. So if you're craving some good Mexican food, stop by Arandas 21. That's the Jersey Village location. Stop by and see Ashley. She's going to have all kinds of new stuff on the menu. You want to try that out. Definitely looks delicious. It smells great. Can't wait to try some when we get off of here. But yes, yeah, it's, it's very exciting things for Arandas. All right, citizens of Laporte, Southeast Texas, Houston, Galveston County got them. It is the Rene Lozano show. They got him now behind bars. Yes. And he is there. I'm sure he's doing more than spreading cheeks there. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry I'm laughing like this, but karma is a mofo. Mm. Man, this cat is one of, like, the most hated in Laporte, dude. Like, this guy has scammed folks, scammed women out of money, yeah. saying, hey, sell me money, I'll, I'll pay, you know, give me some cash, and I'll sell you, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, the money got withheld. I mean, just taking advantage of folks, uh, stealing equipment, burglary of habitation, impersonating an officer, all kinds of mess, like stolen glory. Like, what do you call it? No, stole, stolen... Um, Stolen Valor, man. Mm -hmm. It's just sad. Yeah. And, you know, it was just so bad. This guy randomly would, I mean, he would be walking, but so many people would just had so many issues with him or he burned so many people yeah. and just did people wrong mm -hmm. that people will approach him whether at the bar at g golfing tournaments <laughs> yes, or yes. you know for anything for anything but you got word last week that he got he was uh, arrested oh yeah right? man we, we even photoshopped because at the time this mugshot was released we didn't even have the picture of him i'm like man I, I, uh, i'm about so i put the little shades pick up man and it was going down like all the peeps were excited. Like, no, nope, I've never seen so much excitement yeah. behind an arrest. It's usually like, dang, man, that's messed up, you know, blah, blah, blah. Four counts. Two counts of uh, credit card abuse, I believe. Then the other one was uh, burglary of a habitation. And then the impersonating of an official. So, yeah, this is wild. Yeah, this this story set the internet on fire about oh, yes. a month ago. And people have been following up and asking what's going oh, on. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. fact, uh, a few weeks back, I talked to had the, the pleasure oh. of talking to Renee on the phone. Yeah. And uh, kind of trying to hear his side of the story. But he was telling me that he wanted to, um, you know, have the re reality show. He had camera guys following him. 
him. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they were able to follow him in, into, into jail, but. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, my eye rolling. I can't even. Look, look, I'm rolling my eyes. I just can't no more. Because <laughs> this dude right here, he's a mess, dude. I can't even roll my eyes back anymore, man. I'm, they're tired. Yeah. But this guy is a mess, dude. Like, he's got great genes mm-hmm. according to, like, like the internet hunting, the loopholes, the, the rabbit holes that people went down. Yeah. I mean, we uncovered, like, he was like a, a, a Tinder swindler type, yeah. you know? Like, hey, my genes are great. Like, he, he thought he was God's gift to women <laughs> in, in some of these profiles and stuff. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, this guy will, you know, well... He's got his own show now going on in behind behind bars. Oh yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> justice for the victims. All BS aside, justice for his victims, man. Yeah, Sean on Facebook says a lot of people don't know this, but he was supposed to be the member a member of the Backstreet Boys, but he hurt his knee. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna call all you mother- haters out right now. When I get my knee fixed, I'll line y'all up one at a time in the cage. We'll do it live on Facebook. So I can show all you you ain't got shit. You know, one thing he was always trying to do was fight people like like uh-huh. MMA fighting. Yeah. And he'd say, Well, my knee's bad, I need surgery, but once you know it's on, you know, once I get the surgery, it's on. Dude, go go get that knee surgery. Go sit down. And then somebody said, <laughs> JB Nader says, This is the most interesting man in this city. <laughs> Most oh definitely. yeah. I'm not well, gonna lie, like this dude has pulled some babes just on the fraud like some of the most hottest chicks i've seen i'm like damn he got with her how like this guy man i don't know y'all like this is this this is gonna be a documentary one day i'm yeah, sure yeah for sure um, mm-hmm. now he's the most interesting man in montgomery uh, uh, galveston county yeah. jail <laughs> <laughs> houston surrounding and everywhere else we must protect our elderly mm-hmm. we have to protect our elderly hector man they are the most vulnerable in our community children animals the elderly i always say it man those are the ones you don't touch you don't mess with however we have individuals that do yeah it's just a sick to see when people take advantage of people who are so vulnerable like that you know people and they're and they're sometimes you know they'll be out and they'll trust somebody to yes. take care of them uh to protect them or pro- provide for them yeah. whether it's going out running errands but you have individuals like this idiot here yes. who a sick guy who's out there taking advantage of them by taking their cards and and doing all kinds of things right mm-hmm. so hpd released a mugshot of dustin c mitchell this guy's 43 years old i was like what 43 yes he's 43 and he was charged with three felonies what he was doing was uh like credit card abuse but he was using a deceased elderly person's uh i guess identity or their card and he made all these purchases what investigators are trying to do now is identify more potential victims and i had one reach out Mm. so and i had to take the post down just to keep them safe because this guy's out on bond already so we have to kind of keep, you know, like he could always go back and retaliate. And that was a fear. So we took a post down, but he is no good. If anybody knows anybody, if you come across this man, uh, I heard he's very conniving, very, uh, you know, convincing. Please Con reach out. Yeah, please reach out to HPD because they are investigating this cat. And yeah, that is a no go. We're not putting up with that. We're not tolerating this kind of abuse of our elderly, and it's a disgrace. And you know what, Grizzly, we talk a lot about how get to know who your kids are hanging out with mm-hmm. and talking to. Yeah. You know, we should also, as family members, be a lookout who are elderly and those our seniors in our lives who they're talking to and, and sur- uh, surrounding themselves. Oh, with. for sure. Keep your vo- keep your elderly always like you know because they they get lonely. Mm-hmm. They get lonely. They start making friends online. I don't even know how this story could have started. I need to read the charging instruments. We might do a part two on this because there are gonna come there are gonna be more coming forward, friends. There's gonna be more charges for this cat. But yeah, like how does it start? Does he befriend them? Is it on the internet? Like we need to be more involved in our elderly's lives so they don't have to depend on somebody or think that they need someone else. No, they've got us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They're so vulnerable. I've, I've heard so many stories of these uh, mm-hmm. seniors who are losing thousands of people, yeah. uh, you know, to people that they're, they're trusting, trusting, entrusting into. Exactly. So be on the lookout, folks. If you see this cat, if you come across him, our elderly population, we've got a lot of elderly folks that, that you know, follow the hood news, our seniors out there. We love you. Just, you know, come forward. Don't be scared. Don't be embarrassed. Let's let's do more so we can avoid this guy doing this again because he will do it again. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Absolutely. And this is what we're about at, at Grizzly's Hood News. All right, Grizzly, that will do it for episode number 22. Yeah. 
I am so grateful for you and our Thank sponsors you. and followers. And also, we've streamed now live on Facebook now every Saturday. So if you're watching live on Facebook, thank you for tuning in. Yes, thank you so much, Facebook peeps. That's where it's at, man. Thank you, everyone, our sponsors, our peeps out there, everybody, you know, pitching in footage, p pitching in info. Hector, I thank you as well. Brand Nation. Yeah, let's go, man. Let's have a great weekend. And stay tuned. There'll be more on the way always. And until next week, if it's real news. It's hood news. <laughs>